Welcome back. President Biden signing the massive one and a quarter trillion dollar spending package over the weekend. That package includes $200 million in funding for new FBI headquarters and just $120 million for Border Patrol. Biden calling the bill good news for the American people, but is also urging Congress to pass the additional bills, uh, the $118 billion national security supplemental package and that Senate border deal, which, of course, uh, died in the Senate. Joining me now is South Carolina Congressman Ralph Norman, a member of the House Budget, Financial Services and Rules Committees. Congressman, thanks very much for being here this morning. What do you have to say about this bill? Well, the, the bill should not have been, we should not have brought it to the floor. I mean, there's no, anybody in their right mind, if you're presented with a thousand page document and given 24 hours to read it, you walk away from it. And, you know, it's, that, that does, that's not that hard to do. Now, Speaker Johnson, who is an honorable man, who uh, wants to do right, but he put shut it, not shutting the government down uh, ahead of anything else. And you can't negotiate like that. So, you know, I, we had hoped that he would send it back and we'd have a time to digest it, but we didn't. We didn't have the time. And this has happened over and over and over again with the Senate and the president waiting to the last minute. Yeah, I mean, and that is why Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene basically sent you all home with a wrecking ball, threatening to take down the speaker. She joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures, and she said unless there are significant changes to spending— uh, or border security, she will, in fact, bring that motion to remove House Speaker Mike Johnson to a floor vote. Here's what she told me yesterday. Watch. What you're saying to me this morning is that this is a pink slip. You're, you may not bring it to the floor when you come back from Easter recess to, to get Mike Johnson out, but you want to make a message that you are not going to accept any more of no security at the border. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. It's a promise to my conference. Keep the investigations going. Keep the committee work going. Let's do the good work that we're doing. I haven't drawn a deadline, but that doesn't mean that I won't call it to the floor and force okay. a vote to happen. Congressman, we know that this keeps happening and you all are forced to take on more uh, CRs or follow Nancy Pelosi's spending and budget. What is it going to take to affect change? Well, you know, hopefully, you know, Mike will start listening to, to the conservatives and will do the right thing. He wants to, but he just, at the end of the day, he didn't, he would not do it. Uh, what's got to happen is, and, and I, I disagree with Marjorie, she can threaten to file the motion to vacate, but who are you going to go with? Who wants the job? We've got a one-seat majority. We've got an election coming up. So we just need to keep with Mike Johnson. I mean, he signed, he put the bill forward. It passed. Uh, what, 286 to 134, the majority of the Republicans did not vote for it. But we've got to keep working, and you got to have a speaker to have, um, you know, to keep the functioning going. But I disagreed with, with Mike and what he did with, you know, accepting the 1,000 page, not have read it, 500 million, uh, you know, for Jordan, 125 million for Egypt. Things like that should not have been in there. Marjorie's right on that. But yeah. just because I disagree with him, we can't put him out, in my opinion. Well, well I mean, look, look what's happening with your membership, though. I mean, Ken Buck, Colorado Congressman, uh, Ken Buck resigned from Congress over the weekend. You've got Wisconsin Congressman Mike Gallagher announcing he's not going to be finishing his term. He's leaving Congress on April 19th. When he resigns, it'll have temporarily leave the GOP with just one seat majority. And, Congressman, you can't even have a special election in Mike Gallagher's uh, district because he's leaving early. I I instead of waiting in uh, until the 23rd to allow or, or earlier to allow for a special election, those people in Wisconsin now don't have a representative at all. You can't even re replace him. Why, why would he do no, that to his former colleagues? Well, you know, I don't know. You know, you unless it's for health reasons, you, you fill out your term. And uh, I like Mike, but, you know, he should have resigned. If he's going to resign, do it early so they can have a special election. April 19th is the, is the end date, and I understand he's going to do it after that. Uh, Ken Buck, I do not understand. He's putting this country at risk. Uh, and, you know, the fact that he's, he's leaving early just for other reasons which are unknown to me. Mike, the same way. You ought to, he ought to stay the term and fill it out and then at least give his, rep, his people in his state of Wisconsin, his district, a chance to elect somebody right. else. And but, it's but, a Republican, but if, a Republican but, district. 
it feels like these guys are basically walking out and giving you all the finger. I mean, I, I, frankly, look what they're doing. They're walking out, and you've got a one one vote majority. I mean, you know, all get, Mike Gallagher had to do was choose a different date so that you could replace him and have a special election. He did it intentionally. He did it intentionally. And you know who he's harming? America. He's harming the country. You don't put uh -huh. this country at risk like, like that. And uh, they were good members. Uh, they voted, you know, conservative for, for the most part. But you don't leave your job, leave the ship in the middle of a storm. We're in a storm now. We've got issues in this country, and we need mm. their votes. And the Democrats are off the rails, and we've, we've got to have a checks and balances, and them leaving is not helping. Yeah. Todd Pyro, jump in. This death by a thousand cuts to the Republican majority looks like it is having some impact with the mind of the voter. They do perceive dysfunction. How worried are you that not about the majority up until November, but what are you about the majority going forward, 2025, 2026? How worried are you that this death by a thousand cuts is going to jeopardize that? Well, I, the good news is I think it's waking people up to what's happening to America. Look what this administration is doing. They got a front row seat when they saw the illegals, you know, uh, disobeying uh, the authorities and bum rushing the, you know, to get in this country. And that, that's in every agency of this administration. There's no consequences, no consequences for tearing up cities, uh, no consequences for, you know, coming across the border. And I do think we, we will have some conservative candidates that run. I think the American people now know votes matter, who you put in office matters. It's not what they say, it's what they do, and it's how they vote. So I think uh, they see it for what it is. I think we're going to get, get the, some conservatives elected, and I think we'll have the majority come November of uh, this year. All right, we'll leave it there, and we'll be watching, certainly, Congressman. Thanks very much for being here this morning.